Okay, hi. Um, this might be a relatively short video. I haven't had anybody show up yet from the uh, Zoom help session. Um, so it's a few minutes past, five minutes past here. Um, so I might just give a couple announcements and I'll give them maybe a quick overview of, of, of assignment five, say a few things about it, unless some people show up and ask some questions about it. Um, so kind of as a reminder, my kind of my most important thing I was going to say for anybody watching this or who showed up, uh, do remember that um, our week, uh, we're, 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 we're pretty much done with the course. Uh, we got uh, only four more days though. So this week uh, ends on Thursday, actually, Thursday, January 8th, that, um, July 8th. Um, so this this week is shorter than, than um, four weeks before this. So that means that um, I, I left the uh, problem set due on Tuesday of this week and the program assignment is due on Thursday as usual, but you have to do the final test by Thursday, um, um, you know, by the end of the day on Thursday, by, by midnight. So everything has to be done before Thursday, midnight, because I have to turn stuff in like early Friday morning, okay? So I'm going to have as much graded as I can. Um, um, and, and I'm going to finish up grading like early Thursday morning and submit stuff. So, you know, anything that you don't have turned in by the, by the deadline Thursday, um, I won't have any possibility of looking at. Okay? So anyway, keep that in mind. Um, so so I, I kind of mentioned that in some of the past two announcements for the week. Uh, but uh, make certain that you leave, maybe get started early um, on the assignments this week so you can... Um, time to work on the task and so um yeah so so i'll talk um maybe for a few minutes about assignment five um again unless some people show up and, and ask some questions uh, i'll probably leave the session open kind of as office hours here too just in case anybody shows up late or later um so Assignment five, uh, our, our unit five is about process scheduling um, in a single CPU and multi CPU system. So, um, and our simulator is about a, you know, simulating a single CPU uh, scheduling system. Okay. Um, the, the, the structure of, of our simulation this week is pretty similar to the one for the previous week. In fact, um, um, I, I, I was drawing a blank. I was trying to remember it uh, last week when I was talking about this a bit. Um, so we, we, we've got um, a scheduling system class. Um, and besides the scheduling system class, there's a bunch of scheduling policies. So last week we had a... Um, paging system class and besides the paging system class there was a um, abstract base class for um for different paging policies uh, i can't remember exactly what i called them but um right so so we had um the um yeah the, the clock policy that you had to implement um and we had the, the um first in first out on um paging system all right Okay, so, so the structure is the same, and um, um, I was trying to remember this last time. So if you've never heard of what are known as object-oriented um, design patterns, you might want to look it up. Um, I probably should have brought that. Yeah, so, so look up the, the design patterns by this guy, Gamma and, and, and others, uh, Booch and, and people. It's very useful if you have any interest in becoming like a software um, um, architect or doing um, software design for bigger systems. It, you know, it's good to, to learn about design patterns uh, for coding design patterns. So it's particularly object-oriented design patterns, but there's other kinds of areas, functional design patterns, things like that. So. Anyway, the, the, the strategy pattern, if you mark it out as a UML, um, I mean, this is what been, we've been using for last week and this week in our simulation. So the, the context here is really our system. So last week it was a paging system, and this week it's a scheduling system. Um, so that, that's the, the, the basics of our simulator for the piece of the operating system that we're working on. Uh, but it, 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 then it has... Um, an association with a strategy. So, so uh, when you run a particular um, system, so like for this week, when you run a particular scheduling system, 
you have to specify the strategy you want to use for your scheduler, right? Um, and the default one is first come, first serve this week, first come, first serve um, uh, scheduling strategy, right? But the scheduling strategy is, is done in object-oriented programming using um, um, an abstract base class, okay? Or these are also can be, these are also known as interfaces in some programming languages, okay? So we have a base class, um, a base um, scheduling strategy. Um, I, actually, I call it, I, I should probably call it scheduling strategy if I wanted to um, conform to the, um, um, the strategy pattern for object-oriented design patterns, right? But I, we call it a, a scheduling policy. Right? Uh, and the scheduling policy, there's a base class that just defines the API, uh, and then there's particular implementations, all right? Um, so this week there's first come first serve, which is the default one, which is given to you, and you're going to have to implement another um, scheduling strategy. Okay. Last week there was diff different um, um, paging policies, and you had to implement the, the clock paging policy. So um, anyway, so, so I thought that would be a useful thing for people to, to know about. Um, and um, in particular, so, so I'll look over that real quickly. Um, and then, you know, so as usual, though, um, and like I said, I'm not going to spend as much time on it since I haven't had anybody show up here. But there's a couple of things that I consider kind of warm ups, although the, the last thing or two that you have to do is probably a bit more involved than, than last week with the, um, the paging simulation. Um, so there's a number of getter and setter methods that you first have to get working. Uh, and then this all process is done, um, and then a few others. Um, um, so you're given the check process arrival, but um, you have to implement the dispatch CPU if idle. But then the big thing, though, is that um, I, I left this one a little bit more open-ended than the, the last one. Okay, so um, there, there's not one particular scheduling policy that you have to implement. You have to pick one, okay? So, so um, there is already an implementation of a first come, first serve scheduling policy, and then you have to implement, uh, choose one and implement. Um, you know, it can be either round robin, uh, shortest process next, uh, shortest remaining time. Um, are some possibilities, okay? Uh, and like I said, I'm, I'm going to show that here real quickly, um, uh, getting started on that part of the assignment. All right, let's jump into that. Like I said, I don't think I'm going to spend the time on the tasks here, uh, but let's look at it. So um, uh, just to get your bearings again, so you're going to be starting off by implementing some stuff in the scheduling system in order to pass the, the, the tests given on the assignment five test, the unit tests, okay? Um, so the, and, and, you know, this has the same structure as last time, but the scheduling system, um, uh, oh, it manages a set of processes. So this has some similarity to uh, all the way back to our second unit, the second simulation that you had to do uh, with the, uh, the, um, um, the, the process table um, and going through the process state transition. So again, we are scheduling processes here. In fact, you could implement a round robin scheduler again um, in, in this context. Um, so any, anyway, um, um, but our scheduling system um, is, is a simulator um, that, that manages a number of processes. Um, and uh, the, this time I, you know, you don't really have to implement like the, um, the guts of the scheduling system because uh, there's code already in there that uh, creates like a process table um, and does those things. So, so you have to implement like the get a few getter methods and then a few other things to get this working. But then the other thing, like I said, um, we've got a, um, a scheduling policy, which is the, the strategy that we associate. Um, and, and whenever the, the simulation needs to pick the next process to schedule, it's going to be actually calling whatever policy has been um, instantiated uh, to make that decision on, on the next process to run that type of thing, right? Um, uh, 
So yeah, the first task is some, some getter methods and um, the is the view idle method you have to implement. Um, and then you have to implement the L process is done. So that will, uh, you need to look through the process table. Um, and if any process is not yet done, <laughs> you return false, but if they're all done, then you return true. That's what all process done does. So for the, um, the dispatch CPU with idle, um, uh, you have to implement that. Okay, so that should just be a stub here. So if we look at um, the scheduling system.cpp, um, look at the dispatch CPU if idle. Um, so, you know, I'll probably describe it here, but. Um, um, so if the CPU is idle, you have to ask your policy to dispatch the next process. Okay. Um, so um, uh, there, there's a comment in there. So the, the, the check process arrivals was already done for you, but um, it's using one of the APIs of the scheduling policy. Um, um, well, it's it's um, whenever new processes arrive, we have to tell our scheduling policy about arrivals of new processes. Okay, so that's part of the API for our scheduling policies here. So you know, kind of same way. Um, um, the basically to figure out which process to run next, you have to call a method for the policy and it's going to return the uh, the process ID of, of the process to be dispatched. Okay, so let's start looking at that. So, um, you know, again, the scheduling policy um, is a um, abstract base class of which there are concrete, well, there's one concrete class um, that's already implemented for you, the first come first serve scheduling policy. Okay, but uh, in general, um, if you look in the scheduling policy HPP header file, um, you know, we've got um, um, a couple of virtual methods uh, that any scheduling policy has to implement. So we've got this new process um, that's supposed to be called whenever a new process arrives for the scheduler. Um, this one um, for dispatch CPU vital, you have to call the dispatch process, the, the, the dispatch method for the um, scheduling policy. Right, and it will return the process identifier, right? And then, you, and then, wh whichever process identifier it says should be the next process to be scheduled um, for the dispatch CPU if idle, you have to um, um, assign that to be the identifier to the CPU. Okay, so in our um, scheduling system um, uh, simulator. Um, there's a single member variable called CPU. So if whatever is the current process that's running, its process identifier has to be, that, that CPU has to hold its, the, the pre-ID of the currently running process, or, or it should be idle um, if the, um, or it should be set to idle if the, um, if the system is currently idle, if no process is currently running, okay? Um, And there's a few other things you have to do for the dispatch. So if you do dispatch a new process, you have to um, um, record the start time for the process here. Um, uh, and that might be it. Okay. Um, And then finally, you also have to um, simulate CPU cycle has been given to you. Um, but you have to also uh, implement the, the, the check process finished, okay? So, um, so, so basically you're checking whether the, the current running process, the one on the CPU is finished or not. Um, so first of all, if the CPU is idle, then you don't have to do anything, uh, just return immediately. Um, but if there is a process running, you wanna check 
that running process to see if it's time used um, it equals is equal to or exceeds the service time given for the process. Okay. Um, so um, I just realized that there's one thing that, that they skipped over. So I didn't look at the the um, um, structure of the input file, the simulation files that were given here. If you look at one of the, the dot sim files, um, this is basically the same format as the, the the process tables for doing process scheduling by hand from our chapter nine and chapter ten. Okay, so uh, you're given one line, which is the number of processes in the simulation, and then you're given three columns uh, for each of the the five processes that arrive for our simulation here. So the name of the process, the the, the system time when it arrives, so process A is arriving at time zero. And it has a service time of three. Okay. So within our scheduling system, um, uh, you can get that information out of the process table. Okay. So our process tables here are different than the process control blocks a little bit, like you did um, um, in our second unit for this class. Okay. But but um, this information will get loaded in when we load in the simulation. So if you look at the process, um, um, if, if you have a particular process, you can find out um, when it arrives from its arrival time and what its service time is from the service time, right? And then these other things are properties of actually scheduling it. So when it uh, you know, when it actually started can be different from when it arrived. So it might have to wait a bit before it actually starts. And then when it actually finished processing it needs to be recorded in in time um, and its total time used. So that's its total service time needs to be recorded and so on, okay? Um, all right, if you get all that working, that should be enough to mostly get all of the unit test passing, right? Um, so once those are, 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 are complete, then you should have the unit test passing, uh, but you do need to then um, um, implement um, another scheduling policy. So let me show you how to do that. So you should start by copying the files name First come, first serve policy, right? Uh, and of course, you might want to look at these to see how a scheduling policy is actually implemented, like for the first come, first serve, all right? So, um, so yeah, if we look at um, um, the header for the first come, first serve. So again, this is going to be, uh, it's going to publicly inherit from the scheduling policy, and it's going to implement all of those abstractions, those virtual um, member functions that the scheduling policy defines as its API, right? So for first come, first serve, remember the, um, well, maybe not remember, so this is one thing that you should be reading about and seeing in our lecture videos for this week. So the, um, the, the dispatch decision is pretty easy. Basically, you have to look at, for, for the processes that aren't done yet, right? So, so the processes that, that, that haven't completed yet, um, you have to just look at all of those and see which one arrived first. And, and that should be the one that's returned as the one to dispatch, right? So, um, let's look at that dispatch function, right? So, um, oh, well, um, for the example implementation, um, I did end up uh, creating a queue Right, so we're using a standard template library queue of just process identifiers. So, so that, so whenever a new process arrives, we just throw it on the queue, right? So if you look at the new process, we just push, whenever we're told a new process arrives, we just push its process identifier in the queue. That way, whichever item, whichever process is at the front of the queue um, uh, is the one that's been wait waiting the longest, right? So that makes dispatching pretty easy. Um, you can be, be asked to, to dispatch um, um, a process um, uh, and when there's no processes currently waiting, ready to run, right? So you do have to check that. So yeah, if the queue is empty, um, you just um, return. So, so uh, for all, for the, the scheduling policy that you implement, again, if, um, if you're asked to dispatch, um, but no process is ready to run right now, when you're asked that, that question, um, you should return idle, right? So, so that's an indication that no process is going to run. It's going to dispatch right now and, and run. Okay. Otherwise, for the first come for serve, we can just look at the front item from our ready queue, remove that 
front iron from ridicule and return that as the process. And so that's an example of the, the first come first serve. And first come first serve is non-preemptive, right? So basically um, the preempt method, you can be asked uh, whether I should preempt the current running process or not. So that's the, the, the scheduling system will ask um, the scheduling policy, okay, should I preempt or not, right? So non-preemptive policy should always just return false, right? But if you wanna implement round robin, which is preemptive, um, on like a time slice quantum, you're going to have to do something a little bit more complicated here. So you have to check whether the time slice quantum has been um, 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 exceeded or not, and then return true um, if, it, if that process needs to be a random right? So um, let's let me go ahead and, and um, kind of show you how you would start off by um, implementing new scheduling policies. So, so what you need to do, you need to start off by um, um, like copying the first come first serve policy um, and you should rename it using the, the same format here. Okay, so, so if I make a copy of um, come first serve and if I rename that, I would want to let's say we're gonna do round robin. Use RR as an abbreviation for round robin. Like DFS is an abbreviation for first time first serve. Um, so, oh, and uh, I don't have to do this copy anymore. So, we got our Ron Robin scheduling policy, that is the header file. Um, I can um, copy and paste the SCPP implementation file. Uh, the round robin scheduling policy dot um, uh, file uh, file as well. well okay. Of course, um, you know you'll want to you know rename all those. We'll do like a, a search and replace. Um, we'll do search and replace on Visual Studio Code. Um, Like, I guess so. Uh, if I want to replace first to come first serve scheduling, round robin scheduling, do that here. Um, the value replace here. So we'll just go and do that. Of course, you should uh, read through the documentation and, and, you know, change where needed to make that appropriate. And um, always try to make certain that your documentation um, matches uh, your actual function, but um, just going to change all these. So we also change the name of the class. Um, oh, um, be careful. Um, um, so we you should also change. You don't want to have this you don't want to have two um, defined with the same name here, or else you'll have problems. So that should also be changed. Um, Robin scheduling policy would be All right, and. Um, Do the same in the um, in the uh, implementation file. So we'll we'll change first come um, first serve scheduling policy to be uh, round robin. Round robin scheduling policy, right? I have an example of refactoring here, right? So, um, so I've mostly changed everything I need to. Of course, the implementation is still first come first serve here. I'll leave that for now because what I what probably what you want to do is your next step is you want to get everything compiling so you can compile it and run it with um, the strategy, right? Um, um, File and test out your code. You need to add it to the build system. I haven't done that for you this time. Um, um, 
So uh, that means you know that you are going to have to to do something with the the make file. Okay. So um, I gave an example in the make file. So basically, what you need to do is add the new scheduling policy to the list of sources that are going to get compiled. Um, 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 so there are some comments in the make file to do this. So you know, if you're choosing like Turk process next or something, you, you need to change the name. But, but yeah, you want to add these. Be careful. Oh, be careful that um, uh, there's a common mistake. So these these all of these actually have to be on the same line here. Uh, but but um, um, for readability, I didn't want to have one big long line in the make file. So you have to put uh, this backslash at the end of the line so it actually continues on the next line here. But but that means that, yeah, this line that was the last line needs to have a new backslash on there. Okay. Um, same thing with the objects. So. Um, you want to add it to the end of the objects, making certain that, um, that the one that was the last one before is now the last one here. Um, and the technically, I don't think this will cause anybody a problem, but you technically do need to um, define the um, additional prerequisites um, to make certain everything builds completely cleanly. If you don't define this, um, you might have to like do a make cleans by hand just to ensure that you rebuild your new policy um, correctly whenever it needs to be rebuilt. But I can give you an example of this. So, so for, for round robin, it'll be similar. Or your scheduling policy will be similar. So. The, the, the object file should depend on your implementation file, Ron Robin scheduling.cpp. Um, um, oh, that's a mistake there. There only needs to be, um, oh, it, it, um, first come, first serve should have depended on just the, you can kind of figure these out from the, the things that, um, Um, yeah, I meant, I meant uh, the, the scheduling policy should depend on the header file. Yeah, so there's a problem in the make file there. Um, um, in the header file, um, and it should depend on the implementation file, basically. Oh, yeah, so that's better. And I fixed that one too. And then also, uh, in particular, so since these are subclasses, these, these are child classes of the scheduling policy, um, if, if a change happens to the scheduling policy header file, we ought to read compile the Brown Robin scheduling policy. So basically anything that you include, like um, um, so so our Brown Robin scheduling policy dot HPP includes the scheduling um, system HP. So um, yeah, probably technically I should also put scheduling system that HPP um, as well as depending on the here. So with these missing, basically there's a potential that um, if I made, if you made a change in like the scheduling system that HPP file, which you normally don't do, but if you made a change into that, um, it might mean that these need to be recompiled. Okay? So the reason why those probably aren't really causing the problem why I had a mistake on this is that um, um, we, we're not normally like modifying the scheduling system HPP in this assignment, nor are we modifying the, um, the, the .hpp file, the, the first come first serve scheduling policy .hpp file. So, um, but anyway, um, you might want to have those in there. Now, when you have that in there, what you should see is if you do a recompile, so, so I'd, I'd recommend after adding, changing your make file to do a make clean, so do a control shift one, and do clean everything here, um, and then do you know your normal make all, control shift two. Uh, but you should look closely, so you should see that it adds in compiling your from raw run or whatever, um, scheduling policy you added in there, right? So you should see it compile that from a .cpp file to a .o file, so your object file. And then at the end, uh, for, for both of these, for the test and for the sim, you should see that it links it in there. 
time, right? So, so we see now not only is it linking in the first come first serve scheduling policy, but the new round robin scheduling policy gets linked in because we add, added that to the object file. So both for the test and the simulation. Um, and then finally, before you can begin implementing, so, so the way I have it now, you'd have to modify um, the round robin scheduling policy, all, all of its member methods to implement round robin instead of first come first serve, right? But um, if you want to test things out, I mean, you could add some, some tests, um, but the, uh, the, the, the main thing I, I suggest that you do um, is that you modify the, um, the um, time at five uh, sim.cpp file um, and add in so that you can call, uh, you can run a simulation with the new policy that you're asking to run. So let's look at how this runs um, with the simulation as it's given for you. Okay, so basically sim works from the command line. Um, um, and um, we can we can run our simulations from the command line. So I'll open up the command line here. So whenever you build, um, it builds uh, not only the test file to run the unit test with, but it builds the sim to run the, the sim uh, simulation with, right? Um, so you know, uh, as I've shown this before, uh, you can you can run these sims by hand. So if you use dot slash sim, um, it'll, it'll actually run the simulator. So, so notice um, if you don't specify the, the command line parameters correctly, you'll get this usage message. So that's, that's where this is coming from, is this usage function that just prints out the big usage message. Okay? So what this is telling you, though, is that um, you're supposed to call .sim with, um, give it a policy and give it a .sim file. And then there's a third optional, optional um, time slice quantum. So for round robin specifically, or, or anything else that might use like a time slice quantum, um, you might want to pass in quantum as the third parameter. Okay. Um, so So like if I want to do round robin, right? Uh, well, let, let's do, so, I mean, we, we haven't actually added those in yet. So right now, the only one that's that's in there is first come first serve, right? So probably if I do this, um, you'll get an error about unknown invalid scheduling policies um, on here, right? So, so, so yeah, since round robin, um, um, it's not yet. Um, add it in here. That, that's uh, kind of the last thing you need to do in order to run stuff here. Um, but yeah, if you wanted to do first come first serve um, by hand, so when you run the system test, um, it's doing basically the same thing. First come first serve doesn't have time slice quantum, so you just do say this policy I want is first come first serve, and then the process arrival table sim file that we want to use for the simulation. Right? And we'll run the simulation for you. Good, although something looks, oh yeah, so yeah, um, I haven't implemented the stuff yet, so it's not actually uh, working correctly, um, so it's not actually um, scheduling, so everything has turned in time of minus one, so that, it, it didn't read in the process table correctly, so we have the five processes and the arrival time and the service time, but it's not actually uh, doing the simulation here, so. Um, all right. So yeah, to finish this off, um, um, I already have code in there that will read in the command line parameter for the time slice quantum, which again, if you're doing like round robin, you'll, you would need that, right? So um, as an example here, um, We can just uncomment the next else part here, right? Um, so, um, if the policy is first come first serve, we want to create a new first come first serve 
serve policy and we're going to use that in the simulation. So part of starting up a simulation is you tell it with what is the scheduling policy that's going to be used. Right? Um, here now, so, so now that I've implemented uh, round robin, um, we can call the, uh, we can create a new round robin scheduling policy and pass that in as our policy. Okay. Although yeah, here, um, as I'm showing, um, just to get you started off with round robin. So one of the um, basic things of doing round robin is you have to know what the system time slice quantum is. Okay. So, so kind of as a hint here, I'm saying that for that particular scheduling policy, you, you really should, when you construct the policy, you should be saying, okay, what is going to be the time slice quantum that we use um, for that scheduling policy, right? Um, and, um, you know, just copying over first come first serve, um, it has a constructor, but the constructor doesn't you know, so we don't have like a, a time slice quantum as a parameter. We don't um, have a um, when we construct a new Ron Robin scheduling policy. Um, um, well, before we didn't have a constructor, but but yeah, so you can add it in so you can specify when we create our Ron Robin scheduling policy that. Um, what the time slice quantum should be for your round robin scheduler. Um, and of course, then we have to modify the um, constructor then to match that. Um, probably allow it to compile there. Um, we, we did that, you know, going back here, we did that so that we can um, get this to work correctly, right? So now, oh, uh, and one final thing um, that I missed. Um, so notice um, it doesn't know um, what a round robin scheduling policy object is because we also have to include the header, um, right? So we're including first come first serve, so we can use first come first serve scheduling policies, but we would need a similar Anyway, um, I don't know why my pace is also not working. Anyway, uh, we need to include the, our header file for the round robin scheduling policy header um, so that um, we can make round robin scheduling policy objects. Right? So if you do all that right, so that, that's just to get you set up so that you can actually implement and, and probably the best way to debug. I mean, uh, another thing uh, sometime in this class, uh, you could add in or create your own set of tests, unit tests to, to test things, um, right? Or, you know, maybe one way to debug it. Um, in this case, once you get it added in to the simulation, you can run simulations by hand um, and, and see if, if things are working the way you expect or not. So, so that compiles. Right, and uh, you know, I mean, my test should still be able to run, and hopefully, at this point, when you're working on your scheduling policy, you should have all your unit tests passing. Right? Um, and now that we we built it, and we've added in the round robin scheduling policy, we should be able to run it um, using uh, our round robin. Um, say round robin scheduling policy, uh, use process table one simulation um, input and use a time slice quantum of five there. Okay, so you see how we did that. So we just separate those by spaces, but these are the command line arguments to pass into the simulation, right? Um, and that should run. Of course, it's really just using first come first serve again. So we get the same results as first come first serve now. So. But yeah, after this point, you have to implement the stuff. Um, to actually do a round robin schedule. Okay. All right, so yeah, I didn't have uh, anybody show up yet. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here and post it as usual. 
uh, in case anybody wants to look at it after the fact. Um, and I'll probably kind of leave the Zoom open up here, see if anybody shows up uh, later. But yeah, as usual, yeah, if you missed the, the Zoom, you know, feel free to email me questions um, and I'll be happy also to set up face-to-face uh, -face or, or Zoom um, um, office uh, meetings to talk about things as well with students. All right. So yeah, that's it. And um, and yeah, I uh, hope, hope the semester was good for everybody. Um, and um, I'll see you guys later then.